In the frigid domain of the ice colony Thule 5, I am an investigator of the enigmatic expanse, much like a forensic expert combing through the remnants of a desolate world. My counterpart, Kale, is the elusive architect of puzzles left for me to decipher, his actions a trail of cosmic dust leading back to his essence. Sarah, he had whispered on the day our paths first crossed in the confines of the orbital research vessel. In the vastness of space, locking your airlocks is a choice, not a necessity. It seemed less of advice for survival and more a philosophy for life. The irony of it all was stark. The asteroid miners had breached Thule-5's crust long before the scientific sanctuaries were established. Kale had been extracting precious isotopes from the core when I was a naive academy graduate, determined to shield the celestial bodies from the avaricious grasp of interstellar conglomerates. From our initial encounter, it was clear we stood on opposing thresholds. However, the harshness of the void makes for strange bedfellows. When the eternal night of the colony's orbit set in, we found solace in each other's company. By the cycle's end, our shared commitment was etched into our skins with the emblem Theta-79, symbolizing Thule V's sector in the galaxy. After consuming Synthahol from our rationed reserves and a night spent gliding over the icy plains to witness the cosmic ballet of nebulae, our bond felt eternal. The act was sacred, a ritual binding us to the stars. We coexisted in the remote settlement of Thule V through the duration of the orbital eclipse. The emblem was both a keepsake and a beacon of our connection, a vow of indestructible allegiance. Then, with the re-emergence of the colony's primary star, the dynamic shifted. As an exobiologist, I should have anticipated that what blossoms in perpetual shadow often withers in the light of a new phase. The Thulean Mining Syndicate was set to decommission the IOTA-7 shaft, and Kale was to remain, seeking new opportunities within the colony. Peace treaties were brokered, and the skirmishes between us receded into memory. Then the Andromeda insurgency erupted, and IOTA-7's closure was postponed. Kale was recalled. I shall return with the next orbital sunrise, he assured, and then he vanished into the depths of the mine. We naively believed the conflict would be brief. Surely no civilization would willingly sacrifice their kin for mere control over resources. Yet, we underestimated both the greed of the corporate sector and the resolve of a population clamoring for autonomy. Our regular subspace communications dwindled to sporadic messages. Eventually, a solitary transmission in the cold of Janus cycle. My presence is required indefinitely. That was the final echo from him. Now, as the year cycle nears completion, his absence weighs heavily upon me. The star cruiser Aurora Voyager slices through the cosmos, its course set for Thule V, and I peer into the abyss, contemplating the constellations. Upon arrival, alongside my Terran colleagues, Cass, Lyra, Jules, I intend to unravel the enigmas of the orbital eclipse, the fluctuations amongst the indigenous microfauna, influenced by the dimming of the starlight. Despite my tenure within Thule V's embrace, the thrill of true discovery still courses through me. I resist the urge to envision Kale, divesting himself of his protective gear in the IOTA-7 refuge, nestled within the bowels of Thule V, each cycle's labor heightening his peril. In the colony's canteen, he'd likely be cloaked in the residue of his toil, unbothered to cleanse before consuming his nutrition pack. He is Thulean, heart and soul, untamed, every one of them. My affinity lies with the shadowed stretch of the orbital eclipse. A constant mimic of lunar luminescence skirts the horizon, its glow an endless signal, circling the colony like a celestial lighthouse. The soft blue of the artificial day wanes to obsidian by mid-cycle. And aboard the cruiser, the void cradles us in tranquil repose. Energy hums in stasis all around, stored radiance from eons past, sequestered like provisions in subterranean vaults, 
just beneath the icy crust. An ocean of fuel, a wealth of gas, carbon compressed into the remnants of prehistoric flora. And throughout each stratum, life endures. Yet we, the seekers of life's secrets, are drawn to the most captivating enigmas. The bioluminescence of the krill analogs, their vision fine-tuned to the faintest glimmers. The lycanthropic phenomenon, where all organisms pulsate with vigor under the soft glow in the frozen expanse of colony Kappa Prime. My role is akin to an interstellar sleuth, sifting through the cold evidence of a star system's untold history. The mystery that shrouds this place is personified by the elusive Orion, whose calculated maneuvers leave a stellar breadcrumb trail for me to follow. Nova, he had intoned the cycle we met aboard the deep space station Helios-1. In the boundless reaches of the cosmos, the concept of a locked hatch is but a metaphor for the mind. His words resonated as a philosophy transcending mere survival. The poetic justice of our situation was not lost on me. The cosmic miners had descended upon Kappa Prime, stripping it of its resources long before the scientific outposts took root. Orion had been delving into the planet's secrets, while I was but a fledgling scholar at the Galactic Academy, determined to preserve the sanctity of space from the avarice of interstellar exploitation. Our initial encounter was a collision of ideals. He was the embodiment of the old guard, I the vanguard of the new. Yet, in the relentless chill of space, alliances are formed in the most unlikely crucibles, as Kappa Prime's long night stretched before us, so too did our connection deepen. By the time the nightscape began to wane, we marked our union with ink on skin, the inscription Kappa 79, a testament to the sector that had become our crucible. Following an evening fueled by the warmth of Aldebaran whiskey and a voyage across the icy dunes to witness the dance of solar winds, our bond felt as enduring as the stars themselves. It was a rite steeped in the sacred, a covenant not easily broken. Together, we weathered the extended darkness of Kappa Prime, our shared existence, punctuated only by the glow of distant suns. The tattoo served as both a relic and a beacon, a pledge of our unyielding connection. But when the planet's orbit brought forth the dawn, I was reminded of a harsh truth. In the universe's grand scheme, even the strongest of bonds may falter when faced with the light of change. The impending closure of the Helium-3 mine, Omega-7, loomed over us, and Orion was to remain, to seek a new purpose within the colony. We brokered armistices, believing the skirmishes of our past to be just that, history. Then, the conflict erupted in the neighboring Andromeda sector, and Omega-7 found new life. I will return with the next equinox, Orion pledged, before disappearing into the mine's abyss. We had optimistically assumed the strife would be fleeting. No civilization could justify the loss of its youth over resource squabbles, or so we believed. But we had sorely misjudged the veracity of corporate entities and the tenacity of those fighting for their sovereignty. Our communications, once frequent and rich with shared discovery, became a trickle of sparse and emotionless updates, until, in the depths of the Janus cycle, a final sparse message from Orion arrived. Duty demands my presence. Then silence enveloped us. A year cycle has nearly passed since that day. Aboard the celestial vessel Starfinder, I journey through the vacuum towards Kappa Prime, and my gaze lingers among the stars. Joining my Earth-born colleagues, Callan, Lyra, Juno. Our mission is to document the phenomena of the perpetual twilight. The strange behaviors of krill analogs and phytoplankton altered by the fading of starlight. After cycles in the colony's orbit, the sense of embarking on a true odyssey still thrills me. I shun thoughts of Orion, removing his protective suit in the confines of the Omega-7 respite chamber, deep within Kappa Prime's core, where each passing day heightens the risks of his subterranean existence. It would be the colony's rest period now, and he would be adorned with the fine dust of his trade, 
unbothered by the grime as he consumes his rationed sustenance. He is a child of Kappa Prime, rough and resolute, wild, every single one of them. Yet my preference has always been for the dominion of the darkened sky. A ceaseless semblance of lunar light traces the horizon, an eternal beacon orbiting our outpost. The simulated daylight fades to the deep black of the void mid-cycle. On the Starfinder, the silence of space is a serene lullaby. Potential energy is omnipresent, a boundless reservoir of ancient starlight hoarded like precious grains in the cosmic silos beneath the planetary ice. Oceans of liquid hydrogen, vast reserves of natural gas, and coal deposits enrich the subterranean realms, the weight of ages compressing carbon from the foliage of forgotten worlds. And in every layer, life persists of the planet's twilight. The creatures shone with vitality, an evolutionary masterpiece sculpted by the peculiar rhythms of this distant world. As the Starfinder approached the docking bay of Helios 1, the station's angular silhouette cut through the star-studded tapestry of space like a shard of civilization amidst the wild, untamed expanse of the universe. The crew readied themselves, murmurs of anticipation vibrating through the ship's corridors. I fastened my uniform, the fabric woven with threads of synthetic spider silk and graphene, adjusting the emblem that proudly bore the insignia of the Exobiology Research Division. Nova, Callan's voice crackled through the intercom. We've got a situation in the lab module. The phytoplankton samples from the last expedition are exhibiting some unusual patterns. On my way, I replied, my heart rate accelerating not from the urgency of his tone, but from the prospect of discovery. As I navigated the narrow passageways, I couldn't help but feel the echoes of Orion's presence, almost as if he were just around the corner, a specter in the peripheral vision of my mind. The lab module was a symphony of scientific instruments, each playing their part in the orchestra of inquiry. Callan, Lyra, and Juno stood huddled around the microhabitat container, their faces illuminated by the soft glow of bioluminescent life within. Look at this! Lyra whispered, her voice tinged with awe. The phytoplankton, usually a predictable tapestry of greens and blues, now pulsed with a spectrum of colors. It was as if they were communicating, their light patterns a language we had yet to decipher. It's like they're reacting to the Starfinder's presence, Juno mused, his eyes reflecting the myriad of hues. Or perhaps, I offered, they sense the change in energy as we transition from the darkness of space into the embrace of Kappa Prime's orbit. We watched in silence, the phenomenon unfolding before us, a reminder of the enduring mystery that was our privilege to explore. It was moments like these that fortified the bond between us, a shared reverence for the unknown. The docking procedure commenced, and the Starfinder aligned with Helios 1. The familiar hiss of the airlock signaled our arrival, the threshold between the void and the vestige of humanity in this secluded sector. I stepped onto the station, the gravity generators grounding me with a gentle tug. Nova! A voice greeted me, warm and familiar. I turned to see Dr. Arik Torin, the station's lead researcher, his face creased with the wisdom of cycles spent in the stars. Arik! I smiled, embracing him. Any word from the Omega-7 site? His expression tightened. Nothing since the last transmission. But Nova, there's something you should know. We detected an anomaly in the mind's last data burst. It's faint, but it's there. A signal. A signal. The word resonated within me, a sliver of hope. Could it be from Orion? The question escaped my lips before I had a chance to temper my expectations. It's possible, Arik conceded, but we can't be certain until we investigate further. I nodded, my mind already racing with possibilities. The Starfinder's mission was clear, but my personal quest had just gained a new objective. I would delve into the data, into the depths of the Omega-7 mine if necessary, to unravel the mystery of the signal. And somewhere, in the cold embrace of Kappa Prime, 
I knew Orion was doing the same, working tirelessly amidst the shadows. Our paths, intertwined by the ink on our skin and the stars in our hearts, were destined to cross again. In the grand canvas of the cosmos, our story was but a flicker of light in the darkness, yet it burned with the intensity of a supernova. The adventure was far from over. It was merely awaiting the next chapter, beneath the eternal gaze of Kappa 79.